Zoom's constantly putting out new features for us, but I wanted to take the time to make a video about Zoom's scheduler because it solves a problem that we all have and it's so easy to get up and running. I know I'm not the only one out there who struggles with all the emails it takes to set up a meeting sometimes. Oh, what does next week look like for you? Tuesday looks good. Tuesday's bad for me. How about Wednesday? Sometimes it's 10 emails back and forth just to set up a Zoom meeting. So I basically solved this problem by setting up Zoom Scheduler. I actually have it embedded on my website. So if anyone goes to letsdovideo.com, go to the About Us tab and go to Schedule a Meeting, this is what they'll see. It's a simple calendar. You can pick a day. You can go to next month if you want, select any day and you get a list of times that I'm available. This is linked to my actual Google Calendar. So if I put something in my Google Calendar and take up the time, it'll, it'll get removed from the list here. Pick a time you want, put in your name, your email address, any information uh, that'll help us prepare for the meeting, and you and I will both get a calendar invite with a Zoom link for the meeting at that time. That's all there is to it. No back and forth, how does Tuesday look for you? What about next week? I just send them the link, they pick a time, and we have our meeting. So let's see how we set it up. So here we are in our Zoom Workplace app. And I know some of you are thinking, oh, I don't have Zoom Workplace. I just have Zoom meetings. Well, it's all Zoom Workplace now. And I just did a video on everything you need to know about Zoom Workplace and the link is in the description. So looking up at the top of our Zoom Workplace app that we all have, we see there's a tab for Scheduler. Zoom Scheduler doesn't come with the basic version of Zoom. So if you don't see the tab, you might need to upgrade your account or you can purchase it as an add-on. Clicking on the tab, we get a message. Welcome to Zoom Scheduler, Zoom's simple scheduling solution to remove all the back and forth communications. Exactly what we're looking for. Okay, let's click the get started button. The button in the app took us to our online settings for Zoom. Looks like we're setting this up online. So let's get started. First thing, and this might be one of the most important things, what do we want our public facing link to look like? Let's see, I put my name in as default, but let's see if it's taken. I want scheduler.zoom.us slash LDV. Yes, available. And now I just need to connect my calendar. So I'm using a Google Calendar, sign in with Google. After connecting your calendar, you'll be able to go back to the Zoom Workplace app and manage everything from the scheduler tab. Create your schedule, manage your options, everything I'm about to show you. However, I didn't realize this till after I recorded the video, so I set up everything on the website. You could do it in the app or on the website. Now I'm gonna to try to keep this quick. The whole point of Zoom is that it's easy to figure out, so you don't need me to tell you what every single button does. Obviously they want us to get started with creating our first schedule, but before we do that, I wanna show you a few things. Up top, I see a link to view public page. So let's click it and there we go. I did get it, scheduler.zoom.us slash LDV. Nothing here at the moment because we haven't created our schedule, schedule yet. So let's go back and I wanna see what's in this share button right next to it. Nice, we got a QR code that'll take us to that page and probably even more important for me, add to website. I'm gonna embed this on the contact us page of the Let's Do Video website. And one last thing before we create our first schedule, I see a little settings button here. And here's some basic stuff. I can change my profile picture, uh, if I decide I don't like having slash LDV and I want to make it let's do video, I could change that here. I could change what calendars I'm connected to. I could replace the Zoom logo with my logo. I'm going to take care of that. And this last one's interesting, availability. They have an availability scheme set up, which is working hours, 9 to 5. I want to create my preferred hours. So I'm going to create availability. Let's call this David Preferred Hours. I'm East Coast, but I prefer to work California time. So let's keep it Monday through Friday, but let's change 9 a.m. to noon. And let's change 5 p.m. I don't mind working late. Let's make it, let's make it till nine. And I'm gonna do that for every day. Okay, so now I have two options. I have David's preferred hours and working hours. Actually, I'm gonna set my hours as the default. So let's finally click on our create schedule button that's been sort of begging us to click it ever since we got here. And okay, there's four different kinds of schedules. And while the any host, all hosts, and one to many, I kind of want to talk about them because they're really powerful and really interesting. But I think most of us are going to be using the one to one and I want to keep this video short. If you're all really interested, please let me know in the comments and I might do another tutorial on the other modes. But let's create a one to one schedule. So who's the host? It's going to be me. If you have multiple team members, you could sign another team member. 
And I'm going to call this, first thing is the name, briefings. The idea is if you want to brief with me to learn more about my company or for me to learn more about your company, you'll use this schedule to set up a briefing with me. Next, I'm going to choose my color, which is LDV blue, very close to Zoom blue, of course. The link, it def by default, put briefings there. I could put something else, but I like that. Scheduler.zoom.us slash LDV slash briefings. Default duration is 30 minutes. I'm fine with that. I'm just going to leave that. Video conferencing, obviously, I wanted to attach a Zoom meeting to the meeting invite. Location optional, we're not going to be using that. I'm not going to make this private. I want it up on my public page. And additional information, I don't know what to put in here, so I'm just going to leave it blank for now. Okay, so now we choose my availability, and of course I'm going to use David's preferred hours that we just created. And I'll have it repeat forever. Could have a date range on there. And this is interesting, buffer time between schedules. I'm not sure, I'll have to check with my friends at Zoom, but I'm assuming that if I put 10 minutes or 30 minutes in there, it'll prevent meetings from happening back to back so that way I can have a break between meetings. I'm going to leave it empty for now, but if, if I understand that correctly, that's a, that's a pretty cool feature. On to the notifications when someone schedules a meeting. Looks like we have an option between a calendar invite and an email invitation. I prefer getting a calendar invite. And under, let's see, there's cancellation policy, additional notifications. This stuff seems pretty intuitive. Remember I said I'm not going to go through every button? This is exactly what I was talking about. You can figure this stuff out. So let's go on to the next final options. First, some rules. This is our increments of what it looks like since we have 30 minute meetings. I'll have it look like 30 minutes on the page. Maximum number of bookings per day. This is a good one. If you get burnt out after four meetings, limit yourself to four meetings and then it'll, it'll lock up. Minimum time. This one I like. Minimum time before a schedule starts, attendees can book. I don't want someone booking a meeting an hour from now. I need time to get ready. I actually need, let's see, we have options, minutes, hours, and days. I need one full day. Maximum advance time. Uh, Actually, I'm going to leave this turned off. I don't care if someone books a meeting a year in advance. Let, let them do that. Uh, verification, I don't need that. And let's go on to our attendee questions. Name, a, uh, email address, anything that will help me prepare for the meeting. Obviously, that's very helpful. And if I want, I can add questions. And finally, the confirmation page. It can go to the Zoom scheduler page, or if I want, I can send it to my website. I'll just leave it at the Zoom schedule confirmation page with the option to click a button to schedule another event. And I'm finished. Okay, so there we have it. Our schedule is now live at my custom link, LDV slash briefings. So let's go there. And again, this will be embedded on my website, but for now, let's just go to the page. Okay, so we have a calendar, just what we'd expect. And there's a bunch of available times. The weekends are blocked off. The past <laughs> is blocked off. And I'm looking at times that I know I have meetings that are not that are not there, things that are in my calendar. If I go to my Google Calendar and add something, that time will be removed from here. So this is what people who want to have a meeting with me will see instead of a bunch of emails back and forth. How does Thursday look? How does Friday look? This time, that time, I'm just going to send them this link and they can just click on a time. Oh, Friday at three o'clock. They'll click on it, put in their name, put in their email address, click the book meeting, and we'll both get a calendar invite with the Zoom link for that meeting we're good to go. I hope that was helpful and you'll have a lot less scheduling headaches in the future. Please let me know if there's any other Zoom features you'd like to see a tutorial on. Just let me know in the comments and please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.